Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. I was uh, fortunate enough to be given some uh, fish by a friend of the channel here. And uh, these are sucker fish. And uh, sucker are a uh, fish that's native to the Great Lakes that um, typically runs in April. And uh, I'm going to actually show you guys how to uh, smoke these fish today. Now, uh, I'm a firm believer in uh, being able to uh, get resources within walking distance of your house and this is a resource that I can get within walking distance of my house if I choose to. Um, there's several different ways that these fish can be uh, prepared. Well, you can certainly uh, cook them fresh. They can be canned and a uh, canned sucker is very similar to what salmon is. Um, but I'm actually going to smoke these. Smoking is a very traditional uh, way that these uh, fish are prepared. and But it takes a couple days to do it. They have to be uh, cleaned and they have to be put into a brine. Um, these fish are also easy to catch this time of year. They can be caught on a hook and line, they can be speared, or they can be shot with a bow and arrow. Now these fish here were speared. It's kind of a local thing to uh, spear sucker in the spring. And like I said, a uh, friend of the channel gave these uh, to me, so I'm going to show you guys uh, how to clean these and how to prepare them. All right, we have our uh, sucker on the board here. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to cut um, the head off and then we're going to cut down the spine up to about the center of the tail right here because I'm going to cut these in a traditional fashion to uh, to hang these. Now these can be cut uh, right straight through in uh, sections. They can be filleted um, and they can be laid flat to smoke as well. There's a couple different ways to smoke these. They can be uh, wired up and they can be hung with wire but I'm going to try to hang these with uh, just uh, basic stuff out in my fire pit. One good thing about uh, smoke and sucker is it takes very, very uh, little processing to uh, get these fish ready. We basically take the head off, the skin and the scales uh, stay on uh, for the smoking. So you basically just cut the uh, head off, you cut it down the uh, center of the fish, and you take the insides out. And the insides are all going to go into the uh, garden so they get used as well. And you can see the uh, the inside there with the meat. Now we're going to cut right about down the center. Now we're going to take the insides out. scrape it a little bit and then uh, these are going to get washed several times before we get ready to brine them. Make sure my cut is good here. Turn it around real quick. And that's basically uh, how they're going to hang in uh, the smoker. We're going to cut the fins and tails off uh, when we clean them. But that's basically uh, the rough cleaning of these fish. And here's what our fish look like after they've been rinsed about three times. I got the uh, fins cut off. I got the uh, tails cut off. And give you an idea here what the meat looks like. It's just a real clean uh, white meat. Flip this over here. Get a little bit of an idea what they look like inside all cleaned up. Now we're going to mix up a brine. Uh, the brine is just a real simple recipe of uh, one gallon of water, um, one cup of uh, kosher salt, and one cup of brown sugar. And then they're going to uh, brine for about 24 to 48 hours, uh, typically is what they're brined. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, but they need to be in at least 24 hours so they take up the salt. All right, I got my two gallons of water here. Now remember, the uh, recipe for this is a gallon of water, a cup of salt, and a cup of brown sugar. Now I got two gallons in here of uh, water, so I'm going to use uh, two cups of 
uh, salt and uh, two cups of brown sugar. I'm using a kosher salt here. We're going to pour this in. And we'll plop in the uh, packed brown sugar. Probably splash all over on me. Oh, not too bad. And all we're going to do is we're gonna just stir this up good. And this is our basic brine. Uh, you can also do a dry rub with just the uh, salt and brown sugar on these fish as well, but uh, we always used to do it with a brine, so that's what I'm doing here today. Stir that really well. And then we're going to add our fish. And we want to keep these fish submerged in this brine and we want to keep this cold so this either has to be refrigerated or has to be uh, kept in a real cold outbuilding and the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, put a plate on top of this to keep these uh, fish submerged so they can take up the uh, salt and the um, sugar for the brine now, uh, tomorrow, when I decide I want to uh, smoke these after they've went 24 hours, I'm going to uh, hang these up and show you guys how I do that. Well, it's the next day, and I'm getting ready to start uh, smoking here. And like all smoking projects, it takes a uh, half an hour or so at the wood pile before we start to split out the wood that we're going to need. Um, I split out regular uh, ash here that I'm going to use. And I also put some in water to soak. Now, uh, fish can be either cold smoked or hot smoked. I'm actually gonna hot smoke this uh, fish today, which is uh, about half smoking and half cooking. So I want a little dry wood and a little wet wood um, to uh, make the smoke and the heat I'm gonna need to uh, do these fish. So when I got them hung up here and uh, padded off, I'm going to uh, show you what they look like hanging over the fire pit. All right, we got our fire going here. We started with uh, flint and steel. We're gonna let this uh, burn down a little bit. We kind of want this to spread out a little bit and go to coals a little bit more. I split some uh, slats out of the wood pile here a little bit earlier to hang our fish on. I'm gonna try these, see if they work uh, great. If they don't work, I'm just gonna split them down a little bit uh, thinner. So anyway, I'm gonna get my fish drained and padded off here while my uh, fire uh, warms up and we're going to uh, hang these guys.
Well, here's the fish all hung up. I uh, drained them and rinsed them uh, slightly and then patted them off with paper towel. Um, they're hung up on the uh, slats to keep them apart just a little bit so the smoke and the heat goes up into the center of the fish. I'm uh, going to cover this up after I uh, let these dry off about a good half an hour. I'm going to cover this uh, tripod up with a uh, damp canvas drop cloth to keep in the smoke and the heat. This is the same uh, primitive process that I use to uh, smoke both the jerky and sausage. I've done videos on them already. I'll put a link in the description for those videos if you guys want to see those as well. And uh, then we're just going to let uh, the fire and the smoke uh, do what it has to do for this. Gonna take a look in here just real quick. Show you guys what we have. See the fish in there hanging. Um, there's uh, two things that I can't emphasize enough that people keep in their stores, and that's sugar and salt. If you have those two items, there's a lot of food preservation that you can do with just those two items. The only thing that I had on this uh, fish was a brine of uh, salt and brown sugar. And uh, that's why I just, uh, I think it's so important that people keep quite a bit of those two uh, ingredients at home. That way, if you run across something, you got the uh, means to preserve it. We're about two hours in. Um, I had one piece of fish fall, so I didn't want that to happen with the rest of them. So I uh, cut them down and I repositioned the fish uh, flat across the slats. Seemed to be doing really good now. Uh, I'm gonna let this go for probably another two hours yet and uh, they should be done. While I'm sitting here tending my fire, I thought I'd uh, tell you the story of the uh, April moon, which is also called the sucker moon. And it's named uh, that in honor of the uh, sucker fish that uh, gives his life to sustain the uh, Ojibwe people. After the long, cold, hard months of uh, January and February when game is uh, scarce, the sucker fish is one of the first game that the Ojibwe would uh, fish as it starts to warm up in the spring. And that's why the uh, April moon is called the uh, sucker moon in its honor. Well, you can see the fish here. I'm starting to get the color on them that I want. Uh, I'm going to let the heat now come up in the smoker until I get a good uh, internal temperature of about 165 degrees. I did have the one fall on me. Had a roll with the punches there, but we uh, laid them flat, and they're looking pretty good. So I'm going to take these off here in a little bit. I'm going to show you what the finished product looks like on these. And here we are after we hit our internal temp. We're going to get these on a uh, sheet pan now, and we're going to let them cool down. And here's our smoked sucker starting to cool down. I'm going to show you guys something real uh, quick here. This is the reason why you leave the skin and the scales on the uh, fish when you smoke them. You can see this piece right here that's starting to cool down. You can see that the uh, meat, as it starts to cool, wants to peel right away from the uh, skin and the scales. So the uh, skin holds everything together while it's being smoked, but then when you're ready to eat it, you just peel that off. Anyway, this is uh, Modern Refugee. I uh, appreciate all my subscribers out there. I hope you guys uh, get a little information and a little entertainment out of my videos. Uh, just sharing the uh, spring sucker run with you guys here in Michigan. You guys take care.